in most cities and many large towns we have amongst sometimes the concrete jungle urban woodlands and these are in in many cases quite ancient woodlands <clears throat> having been there for many many hundreds of years and places where people have enjoyed walking nature studies just getting away from the noise of the city and here this morning we're going to be looking at um, such a woodland here in Plymouth just to see the, the cityscape there looking out there we see in the distance that is Plymouth Sound at the various landmarks of the churches with their steeples that we can see if we do a panoramic sort of view of the area so here we're going to we're walking across a lovely crisp frosty grass and we're going to be walking into the woodland in a few minutes so we leave now the the cityscape and the allotments here on the edge of the wooded area we come into the start of the the park called Central Park and some lovely lovely old willow trees in this particular area as we start to go down towards the woodland track as is often the case looking at reality we have the dumping of stuff this happens of course a lot in the countryside maybe even more so lately then we have that oh, that's a very unusual sight <laughs> very unusual indeed <clears throat> that was a male pheasant that's the first time i have seen a male pheasant in central park but it was clearly there i'm sure you saw it i think the camera saw it before i did Just walking and listening it is just lovely to hear birds singing just for the sake of it there is of course most certainly <coughs> birds that are establishing their territories and it's but it's very early on in the season there we're only at late January now it's always nice to see some funny anomalies this I know in front of me happens to be an area of raspberries some seed would have been dropped there possibly not on purpose coming through the uh, feces of a bird probably whatever and we have now a whole area along here of raspberries <laughs> I suppose they need to be called wild now because they're in the wild and of course we we get it this time of year the the lovely colors of those <coughs> plants and trees that are evergreen so here if you can, you can look here the characteristic ivy and the lovely black berries that are very clear to see there beautiful berries there i'm just going a bit closer and see the lovely berries of the ivy which of course can be a very important food source for birds jays magpies pigeons etc there we have a looks like a cypress laden cypress possibly over there as well often we come across these <coughs> in the gardens as bushes or hedges but when they're allowed to grow as a tree they look very much like this the characteristic shape of the bare branches of an oak tree there and of course the all-important leaf mold that is, is developing under these trees Okay, I'm going to go a bit deeper into the, the woods now. It's always lovely to see, isn't it, are growing on the branches there, the lichen, or lichen lichen, an indicator of good air quality. It's good to see. And here we come more face to face with um, some <coughs> ivy because it has come down, I think, off one of the fallen trees. 
a good food source. The hanging on leaves of the beach. Often many beach hedges hold on to their goldeny leaves, don't they? Even right up to and including the time when the new ones come. You can see then that people will come along here and animals. We would have certainly foxes in here. No evidence of badgers, but certainly foxes and stoats and weasels. And plenty of dogs that will come through here. Of course, the overwintering of the bramble which gives us the blackberries. That is a very common thing now. Some of the brambles become very well established because they don't really die back properly. And here we have a lovely bit of holly, having seen the ivy just now. No red berries left on these for now, but uh, maybe it's one that doesn't have berries, as in it's male or female. And they're looking in the back rock there, a lovely tree, looks like a beech tree. I'm not absolutely certain from here. No, it could be an oak actually, but we'll go a bit closer in a minute. Accessibility, access, is very important. So in this woody woodland area, the council keep the main path very well looked after. We just come off a path, they're obviously going through the woods themselves, but it's very important that people can get access, isn't it, to, to areas such as this. There's the old flowers of the Budlia, that invasive species that uh, fills a hole wherever they can find one. We have some sycamore here, if memory serves. And coming off the beaten track, so to speak a bit, we have on the old hedge here, lovely example of some tongue ferns and and some it looks like lady fern there you can hear a carrion crow in the background look at that the underside there the beautiful the seeded side of the tongue fern that is um, very beautiful isn't it look at that there and here the characteristic bark as I just put my head up of the elder that's the E L D E R, the elder, the one that gives us the elder flowers and the elder berries. So that's a nice example there. And we have here, look at this, the early, the early emerging of lords and ladies. Yes. So yes, this is a clearly a very old piece of hedgerow, probably from indeed many hundreds of years ago when this would have been incorporated as the park here from what would have been farmland. Of course we find that in many cities, you know, animals were brought straight into the city literally up from, from up on the hills. So as we come down here we can see it's uh, a, a very good accessible area here young oak tree you can see a young silver birch there see the catkins there of the hazel tree can you see the, the uh, catkins there more silver birch and here the birds and we can see the birds there is up in the and the trees there we can see a number of looks like crows though there are some there probably are crows just a couple of them they say if you see more than two crows it's probably rooks <laughs> obviously when you get close you can tell I think these are actually rooks around here actually but and there's some magpies going through the canopy <clears throat> I suspect the bird life, like the human life, enjoys um, a bit of sunshine, don't we? Here, under the under canopy here, we have the elder again, thriving. 
the back there we have ash trees and sycamore. We have more mature silver birch there in front of us, the very distinctive bark. Dead and dying timber. A lot of this would be left here purposely for wildlife. All those mini beasts that are so important will be thriving. Looks like the leaves sticking out there of a pine tree. Yes, just looking back to where it goes to. I've walked through here many, many a time. I've never seen that before, but <laughs> it seems strange. It's not, obviously not coming from a really small tree, but you can probably hear the bird song. Reminder of where we are, the siren of emergency vehicle. A little rumble of traffic I can hear even on a Sunday morning as it is now. The shriek of the blackbird. Beautiful song of the robin. I must confess I'm not too great on my bird sounds. Fairly good on identifying mammals and birds and trees but uh, yes I don't have an ear for hearing that I mean I know some of the birds that frequent the area so I would make a educated guess obviously know the chirp of the magpie and the shriek of the jay although around here we don't very often get the shriek of the jay there are some sleepy wood pigeons can you see them there in the trees yes at the top there we have the chirp of the magpies. So here, even after all the wind we've had and the rain, some of the beech leaves are still hanging on there up in the, the branches of that tree. Going into one of my favourite areas here, there's a very old oak tree that would have been around when I was a boy and when my late parents would have been around and my mum would have come through here as a young woman as I have come through here as a young man with my family very important these areas of bramble in the right place very important for wildlife of course for habitat for food supply And here we can see the branches protruding sort of into the screen of these lovely oak trees. There's one that's 150 years old if it's a day. And as we know, the oak tree is the king of all the, or queen, of all the trees, deciduous trees in the biodiversity that is found and associated with that tree, whether it be from the smallest microorganisms to the largest birds nesting in its branches. And here going off track a bit, which is always nice, you can, <clears throat> but it's very important then to also keep to well trodden tracks so that we're not uh, disturbing too much wildlife. But at the same time, it's important that those tracks are there, in my opinion, even some that are made so that people can enjoy. <clears throat> sometimes people come here for their parties and drinking and the rest but hopefully not doing too much damage or any at all dead and dying timber very important looking here at the understory lots of ferns bramble of course as the canopy becomes very dominant it will cut out um, depending on how how um, thick the trees are in their planting will cut out quite a lot of light. That's why the beach is not encouraged generally, even by woodland charities. Um, certainly the Forestry Commission with a lot of active forest management discourages, as far as I'm aware, the um, sort of dominance of beach because it's not a nat native to <coughs> this country 
and even if it was I suppose it would be could be argued that it it gives such a lot of shade um, now here this is a some you can sometimes see the characteristic shape of the non evergreen <laughs> um, larch probably a European larch which loses its needles but is a conifer some lovely bit of dying timber now we do have here in the woodland there have been seen woodpeckers the I think it is the greater spotted woodpecker uh, in another woodland that I have frequented I've got up relatively close to the um, greater spotted but not just this kind of timber but any timber where they can actually um, source some of their diet growing inside the tree yeah look right nice and close up there the the bark of the silver birch very very characteristically showing all those shapes and colors So, so yeah, so apart from the main concreted or tarmac tracks going through, we have these man-made ones that are then made by walkers, dog walkers, a lot along here. <clears throat> and you see, we're just poking our head out of the woodland now. I'm going to go down. This is where um, a lot of people come and take their dogs. A little bit more here of the cityscape. It's looking towards an area called Peveril. My grandparents lived there for many years. And here, just looking on the grass, it reminds us of the Maritimes theme. You can see the seagull there. I know seagulls do come in many miles from the coast, but literally here, only about probably a couple miles, if that, probably a couple miles from the Plymouth Sound. You can see here, I don't, I don't remember in my day, I don't remember as a boy having such nice paths as this and handrails. <clears throat> and particularly considering people don't always wear the best of practical gear. And because of mobility issues, it is very important that people can do like I'm doing. Hold on to the handrail. Well, that's more you because I haven't actually brought the proper footwear. But, uh, but here we're just sort of swinging around again to the woodland. Just looking here into the hedge here. <clears throat> there, look there, we have some overwintering honeysuckle. Wild honeysuckle. We have pennywort down there. There, look at that there. They say you can peel the back of the pennywort and you can put that on a wound. There's some tongue fern. Looks like some lady fern there. Some evergreen holly luck, you wouldn't know it was winter time. Would you look how much greenery we have here? Some of this is down to weather weirding and certainly down to climate change. We have a number of squirrels here. Obviously they're in their drays. I, <coughs> I just came to me now actually, I do recall that they would be yes if memory serves just a little bit of a flashback of course the the gray squirrel i suspect probably the red squirrel as well um has been known isn't it to go into um hibernation during very cold periods so could be that the lack of um activity of the squirrel doing so similar to the dormouse would um be that it's in its dray at the moment but it's lovely to see on the branches here. If you look carefully, there is um, ferns growing. There is polypody growing on the branches there. As well as the ivy even up there. I can see some pennywort growing. As we walk through this wooded area, just listening to some of the sounds. Some of those sounds are of people coming up behind me now who are 
enjoying the great outdoors right here in the midst of the city and for many of us within walking distance recreational area there to the right you can see from the edge of the woodland as we dip down here <coughs> we're going deeper into the woods oops without losing my hat <laughs> and well trodden tracks again pennyworth on the bank there lovely lovely old old trees been there for centuries actually that is a old coppice stool maybe not done intentionally but that's coming from one main base down there with these coming off massive great oak trees beautiful to see the sunlight just coming through the canopy Like I said earlier, I suspect the pigeons up there in the branches we saw just now were literally enjoying the heat of the sun. Enjoying it and needing it to heat their bodies up. <coughs> we have some sorrel coming on there. It looks like there's some young leaves, green leaves. It's amazing to think this is late. Well, it's... Um, November next month. Yes, what a display of green. I think it might be, actually it could be celandines actually. Celandine leaves, unless it is some garden plant that has come in, but uh, there's me saying I'm quite good with my wildflowers, but um, some of you might look at that and think, oh, you know exactly what it is. Hmm, could be. And the characteristic look and touch of the blackthorn here with no leaves, but that is one of the first ones that will be showing a display of lovely white blossom in February. So that could be <laughs> literally next month. Let's just look and see. Mm, buds aren't coming on that amazingly, but uh, and they're the ones that display their their lovely blossom first before the leaves and like the hawthorn that uh, the may blossom that has its leaves in place first this grassed area on the outskirts of the of the woodland is has been um, planted by the um, city council and probably looking at the trees and with memory probably 10 15 years ago so here we look at the, look at there are some characteristic buds of the ash tree. So we can tell that's an ash tree just by the buds. Partly the bark as well, although well, that can change when they get older. There we have the, the very characteristic buds of a oak tree. And the quite, quite sort of common look of the bark as well in the background. Young oak tree and a silver birch which we saw earlier so this area will go through a sort of transitional it doesn't have a lot of bramble here quite a bit of grass but obviously as the trees get older it will be a lot of that will be pushed out this is looking a bit sycamore-ish isn't it here sycamore possibly i think that is looks like a sycamore kind of shaped the buds and there a oak, young oak tree retaining a lot of its leaves. Another old ancient boundary. <coughs> and there we have a, some bramble, so obviously a young tree wouldn't survive too well in that. But of course, when in a natural setting, so many hundreds of thousands of seeds berries are dropped that uh, they would have survived <clears throat> just looking in here a bit this 
some earth movement here. Uh, probably is the earth movement of um, the brown rat rather than the um, rabbit. I've done quite a bit of rabbiting in my time. That's not looking too rabbity and also I've never seen signs of a rabbit um, here at all. I could be mistaken. That looks like the runs going along there. The sort of like the greasy runs of, of the brown rat which is a very important creature for the ecology of woodlands. It's lovely and peaceful isn't it? So peaceful here. I hope you're enjoying the sights and sounds coming to an end now. But it's just lovely to be able to uh, get out isn't it into the countryside even if it is via this um, technology video link. So here from sunny Plymouth, late January 2022. I'm signing off. My name is Andy Stickland. I was always been an amateur naturalist, loved the natural outdoors and an educationalist, mainly in farming. But I love the outdoor world and the natural beauty that's so often right on our doorstep. <laughs>